it's my great privilege to introduce Naradzo Godi. Naradzo is going to be talking to us about progress on new antiretroviral formulations and monoclonal antibodies for HIV prevention. Naradzo, it's such a pleasure to have you speak to us today. Hello, everyone. I would like to start by thanking the conference organizers for inviting me to present. Before I start, I'll have a quick recap of the HIV life cycle and mechanism of action of antiretroviral drugs. To the left of the slide, panel A shows the HIV life cycle, and to the right of the slide, Panel B shows the steps at which uh, the various antiretroviral drugs interrupt the HIV life cycle. Yes, we know that over the past 40 years, we've made tremendous advances in HIV, HIV prevention, diagnostics, and treatment. Yeah? Antiretroviral therapy has led to a dramatic shift of HIV AIDS from an often fatal disease into a chronic and stable medical condition. Antiretroviral drugs are also important in prevention in the form of PEP, PRESP, PREP, TASP, and prevention of parent-to-child transmission. Long-acting injectable products, antiretroviral-based microbicides, broadly neutralizing antibodies, and other novel drug delivery systems are also in different stages of clinical or preclinical pre -clinical development or regulatory approval for HIV prevention. This infographic from AFAC shows um, biomedical HIV prevention trials, results, milestones, and more. I'll base my presentation on this infographic and I will concentrate on the first four interventions listed here as shown in my presentation outline and time permitting, I will also talk about no other novel drug delivery systems. Yes. So starting with Max Islatravia, which is a first in-class reverse transcriptase translocation inhibitor with multiple mechanism, mechanisms of action and high potency against HIV-1, HIV-2, and multi-drug resistant variants. It is 10 times as, as potent as any previous HIV uh, drug, and small doses are very effective, lowering the risk of toxicity and side effects. It is a high barrier of resistance, and I'll bring your attention to two formulations of Islatravia already under investigation. One, a slow release yearly implant based on Implanon and Nexplanon, and a once monthly oral dosing. And these two could broaden access to PrEP. Of note is that MSC in conjunction with a uh, uh, in collaboration with ICRC at University of Washington, uh, implementing an HIV prevention efficacy trial of a long-acting oral islatravia among young African women. Yes. Mo moving on to um, uh, tinofove alafenamide fumarate, TAF, which like TDF is a prodrug of tinofove and both are nucleoside reverse transcriptors transcriptase inhibitors. TAF, when used in combination with m as FTAF, is an effective agent for HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis. We know that TDF is associated with changes in markers of renal function, decreases in bone mineral density, and renal toxicity due to high circulating levels of tenofovir. Yeah, but TAF provides effective therapy with approximately 90% lower systemic exposure to tinofove and therefore has improved safety. I'd like to bring your attention to two uh, studies. Gilead is implementing a phase three study of FTAF, Discovery in women in sub-Saharan Africa, and Conrad, a phase two trial in adolescent girls and young women in sub-Saharan Africa as well. 
Coming on to IPM's Dapivrin vaginal ring, which is formulated as a flexible silicon ring that releases uh, the antiretroviral drug Dapivrin slowly. It has potential for better adherence, is extensive and impressive, strong safety profile, and it is the first ever woman-initiated and controlled um, HIV prevention intervention, easy to use and easily scalable. Of note are two proof of concept studies that were conducted by the MTN and IPM, both of which showed a 30% reduction in the risk of HIV in women at risk for HIV. Yes. So, in 2017, IPM submitted information uh, from 48 uh, clinical studies for regulatory review by the European Medicines Agency, EMA, through an Article 58 application. This application included data from ASPIRE and the RING study, in which um, there were 4,588 women from Zimbabwe, Malawi, Uganda, and South Africa. That was 2017. And then in 2019, the IPM provided more results from two open label studies, two open label extension studies, the HOPE study and the DREAM study. Yes. So they did this with the potential introduction of the RING. And on 24. July 2020, we woke up to the good news that the European Medicines Agency had announced a positive opinion about the monthly dapifrin vaginal ring for women ages 18 and older. Yes, stating that vaginal ring to reduce the risk of HIV infection for women in non-EU countries with high disease burden, like my country, Zimbabwe. As a result, the ring is closer to being considered for approval for use. Yes, yes, yes. This is a major milestone for women's HIV prevention, and we are really excited about this. This is the first step to making the ring available for use, but it is not an approval. It opens the door for ring approval in countries in East and Southern Africa. The ring will need to be reviewed by regulators in each country and added into country-specific guidelines in coordination with the World Health Organization. It may be possible for the ring to be available as early as 2021 in some of these countries. Yes, but this approval does not apply to adolescent girls, pregnant women, and lactating women. Safety studies in these groups are ongoing. And kudos to the MTN for conducting the REACH. The MTN actually is currently conducting the REACH, Deliver, and Be Protected studies, which are looking at the safety and use of the, uh, uh, of the dapivirin ring and oral prep in adolescent girls, in pregnant women, and breastfeeding women. Yes. So let's move on to long-acting injectable PrEP with multiple advantages, starting with this um, uh, ejection addressing adherence issues because it could be injected once every one to three months, for example. People are familiar with injections. They are highly acceptable, especially in my part of the world. Yes, um, they are more discreet and more private than pills or rings. Yes, but there are some disadvantages once given, it cannot be removed. So there's need for confirmation of tolerance before the long-acting injection is administered. And there's also a long pharmacological tail after the administration of the last dose, raising safety and resistance concerns if someone becomes HIV infected. Let's move on to long injectable carpotegraphia manufactured by VIV and in collaboration with Gilead Sciences, let's uh, talk about the two studies, HPT and 083, 084 phase three studies evaluating the safety and efficacy of Keb la compared to TDF FTC for PrEP in HIV uninfected MSM and transgender women in 083 and cisgender women in uh, 084. Yes, so these studies are being done 083 in the US and South Americas, uh, 
Asia and South Africa. And O84 is being done in 20 sites across seven sub-Saharan African countries. At the bottom left of the slide shows the schema of the study. Uh, it's a double-blinded, double-dummy study of Cab LA Group A and Active uh, Truvada Group B. And the study the study is designed in three steps. Step one, oral leading phase. Step two, injectable phase. And step three, open use label. Yes, so step one and step two are blinded parts of the study. Yes. So in, um, in July 2020 and November 2020, the DSMB reviewed HP10083 and 084 study data respectively, and recommended that the blinded phase of the studies be stopped early for successfully meeting study specified objectives. Yes, another success. So these studies showed, showed that Keb LA injected once every eight weeks is superior to daily oral FTC TDF at preventing HIV acquisition in 083 and 084 subpopulations as described before. So both Keb LA and Truvada were safe and well tolerated in both studies. Most adverse events were mild or moderate and balanced between the two arms, yes. So participants taking active TDF-FTC who wish to use Keb la will be able to do so as soon as it is available. So what is next um, with these results? Two studies, HP10083-01 and 084-01, are testing the safety, acceptability, and tolerability of Keb la among adolescents. Some are already asking, but it is too early to know when Cab LA may be available for individuals outside of 083 and 084 because the regulatory approval for Cab LA requires several steps, including review and approval by the US FDA and other in country regulatory agencies. Yes. So let's move on to the uh, antibody mediated prevention studies, the AMP studies being conducted by HPTN in collaboration with the HPTN, two harmonized cohorts assessing uh, uh, the safety and uh, effectiveness, toler tolerability of VRCO1 in 2,700 MSM in transgender people in North and South America, Switzerland, and 1, just over 1,900 heterosexual women in Sub-Saharan Africa. So this, these studies are asking, can a passively infused monoclonal antibody, that is VRC1, can it prevent HIV infection in high-risk adults? Yes. So both trials opened in April and May of 2016. Yeah. And since then, the studies have been conducted with tremendous success. Uh, and the studies are, in general, they are looking to answer just four questions. Just to summarize this, uh, this slide, is, the, is VRC1 safe? Is it tolerable? Does it prevent HIV? And if it prevents HIV, what is the optimal dose? Yes, so that's just a summary of this slide. And uh, since the start of the study in uh, 2016, these two studies have been implemented with massive rates of success. The rates of recruitment were impressive, retention highly, highly impressive, and adherence also impressive. Yes, so what is the way forward with the AMP studies? Um, we set out to do this test of concept AMP, AMP studies to establish life-changing concepts. Yes, so similar, this is similar to how AZT revolutionized the antiretroviral uh, field 20 years ago. Yes, so these uh, studies could fast track um, uh, HIV vaccine development and expand the HIV prevention toolbox. Yes, but of note is that there are no plans to seek licensure for public use of VRC01. No, no plans to do that. Instead, re uh, researchers will use what is learned from these proof of concept studies to design studies, further studies, to evaluate newer antibodies, including 
um, combinations of antibodies. Yes. So also in development are next generation implantable drug delivery systems. As you can see here, there are some degradable and non-biodegradable implants being investigated by Oakcrest, for example, RTI, Conrad, and Intarsia. Yes. And there are also other novel drug delivery systems in pre-development, in preclinical development pipeline. For example, we've got um, Conrad's multi-purpose intrauterine system. There's uh, the mini pill box used as once weekly oral capsule. There's an injectable depot system. So these are exciting times for HIV prevention. And really, I'd like to say thank you again for listening. I'm ready for questions. Thank you.